Boston is known for a lot of things. Colleges, biotech, a Dunkin' on every block. But nightlife is not one of them. Why? And what can the city do to liven things up? GBH News and Axios Boston have teamed up to get to the bottom of it. Morning Edition host Paris Alston and Axios Boston reporter Steph Solis both join me now with more on what they found and found missing in Boston's nightlife scene. Welcome, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Thank Thanks. you for having us. So you went out in Boston and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> Made it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, what are we? What did you find out? A number of things. So as Jeremy discovered in his package, right, there are a lot of people who do a lot of different things after dark when the freaks come out at night in Boston, right? Um, <laughs> that and was not my interpretation of his package, <laughs> but I like that. Yeah. But I, okay. mean, I mean, freak is up to interpretation, yeah. I suppose. Get but freaky. there are a number of bars and, and restaurants and even nightclubs that are available. But for some reason, it just doesn't have the gusto of like a New York or a D.C. or Atlanta or L.A., right? Boston is a sleepy city and in some cases via a survey that we took of folks uh, around this nightlife series we heard that people kind of like that they want Boston to stay a little quieter at night but for those people who do want to go out they're wanting to push limits and have more and different options um, and also see more diversity in their nightlife so that they can have a wide range of experiences. What do you think? I know there was this, this thing a while ago. I'm not sure if it's still operating. It's called the Welcoming Committee. And it was supposed to, were you familiar with this? It was, it, they would host events like gay and LGBTQ AI events at different bars because uh, we're often very restricted. I think, you know, when, that was one of the complaints that Jeremy talked about as well is that there just aren't enough options in terms of different spaces for different people, right? Is that something that you've found in your reporting? Absolutely. And, you know, for me, I'm 31. I don't go to bars or clubs a lot. Reporting on this series felt very validating because I encountered a lot of people in different spaces who seem to feel the same way. They want sober options or they want to play board games or have options that involve other queer people or people... Uh, with disabilities or spaces that are inclusive for those people. You so there's found just... options for nerds. Oh, as well. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's also far and few in between, especially if you don't have easy access to the T or you don't feel safe taking those options. I want to talk about that, too, because transportation is such a big part of it, mm. not just for people who want to go out and not drive drunk or, any, you know, whatever, but also for people who work at these restaurants and bars to be able to get home without having to park in the city and drive back out. What's going on? Is there any discussion about bringing back? I know we had this blip of, of late night tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did, right? Uh, and, and Jeremy did extensive reporting on that. It doesn't seem like it's going to come back, even as, you know, people, or at least not in its entirety as we saw it before, um, even as people are relying on this, like you said, not just for going out, but because they have to get to work. Like I, for instance, and Jeremy, our whole morning edition team, we come into work in the four o'clock hour, but if we needed to use public transportation, there's not really an option to do that. Um, but we do know that the city, especially with the inclusion of the new nightlife czar is looking for different ways to make it such that the city's nightlife economy is is just as robust as the daytime economy and that people do have options to to get around and to go places or even just as the nightlife uh, czar which she she said call me something else other than the czar but one way she put it was that if you just need to go get a jug of milk at like 10 or 11 at night you should be able to do that yeah i want to talk about that position because to me the things that make nightlife more fun are also safety issues as well, right? And we've heard so much about issues of date rape and roofies in Boston bars. And I know that was a discussion I had with, I wrote an article, I think like 2018, about whether or not, you know, these new nightclubs were coming and if the Vegasification of, of Boston, right? Because mm -hmm. there were, the Grand was coming in and Scorpion Bar and all these seaport destinations and folks would come in from the suburbs. But they also had a real big focus on having female security guards in the bathrooms mm -hmm. and having people watching at the bars and just, you know, applying these new strategies. So I'm just wondering if any of that has come up in your reporting and people that you've spoken to. Yeah, it definitely has, um, especially when you have patrons of bars and restaurants from marginalized communities. That's one of the reasons they say they don't really feel comfortable going out in a lot of spaces. Yeah. You hear the stories are terrible. 
really scary. And that's not to say like it can't happen or it hasn't happened in LGBTQ plus spaces or other types of alternatives, but it's just another element of it's just another thing people have to watch out for. You people know, people want a safe space. Yeah, yeah. The nightlife czar that we were just talking about, Kareen Reynolds, she's been at this for about a year. What has she been doing so far, putting into place? What are some of her ideas and kind of what's in the cards for the future? Like what's being proposed? The last I heard, and I believe Jeremy uh, did an interview, uh, the nightlife czar was discussing a couple of options to give not just bars and restaurants, liquor licenses, but also BYOB options to coffee shops, nail salons, other businesses to ensure people have more options to uh, stay out later, bring booze if they want to, but still have that open space if they don't. So at least that's one example of uh, a suggestion we've seen. And I believe that's something that uh, Ayanna Presley did as counselor, attempted to get done. So it's interesting to see that, you know, come up again as a potential solution. But bottomless brunch and happy hour are still illegal. Illegal Those in Boston. Those are deep in the books, Tori. Deep in the books. But I will say, right, I mean, the, the big, one of the things that Steph is, is, is getting at or segueing into is the liquor licensing, which is a huge part of, 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 of a venue's success in the nightlife industry, right? Uh, and we know that, the, at, for instance, out of the 1,400 in the city of Boston, uh, around 2% are, are black or minority owned, which is a very small number. And they're very expensive. We've seen stories and heard stories of where people are, are selling off liquor licenses uh, or being able to buy them for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you're trying to break into this industry, especially if you're someone who is from a marginalized pop population, you just may not have that kind of capital on top of all the other things you have to pay for to get started. I think that's another aspect of the safety thing as well, is that these spaces are often very segregated in Boston. 100%. Because of how segregated the neighborhoods are. Absolutely. And I went to two places to look more into that. And I, my, our producer on Morning Edition, Rachel Armani, will also help co-report this story. We went to Grace by Nia, Nia in the Seaport, which is really cutting out this this enclave for, for black, for all people, but really centered around black, on, on black culture uh, and, and tapping into roots of jazz and soul and R&B to create that, uh, and also La Fabrica in Cambridge, which is celebrating all the different shades of Latin America and the Caribbean and inviting people from all over to come and experience that culture as well. But at the same time, we know in the neighborhoods, right, we know in places like Mattapan or Roxbury or Dorchester, there are nightlife venues and institutions that are, are not getting the same kind of economic draw. They also are struggling coming out of the pandemic. Uh, and as those neighborhoods are being gentrified, they're dealing with things like people saying, calling about noise complaints, right? And, and wanting um, some some policing to happen and not by policing, by police being called, but, but in some cases, maybe, right? And I'll add to that too, just lastly here, there's been a real conversation. Um, Nia Grace had mentioned this when I spoke to her about the respectability when it comes to people of color going out in the city of Boston, right? And and things like dress codes or, mm -hmm. or restricting the kind of music that's being played, like saying that hip hop can't be played when we know that's not necessarily something that makes a population or a party unsafe. Only certain people can wear Tims and snapbacks okay. when it, they go out. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a gentleman, Chip Greenwich, who has been doing a lot of work around that and sort of putting that pressure on the nightlife czar as well to address those issues in this economy. Is Boston fun yet? Are we having fun? <laughs> on who We're you having ask. fun right now. <laughs> so you can go to a, a, a board game bar, or you can go to a bar, a board game location that you, where you don't have to drink. You can go out. You can maybe go to a nail salon and bring a paper bag with a forty <laughs> in it. Yet soon. Is that Hopefully. fun? Soon. Are we fun yet? Are we too? I mean, are we post puritanical? Ooh, Ooh, I don't I, know if we're there yet. But are we getting That's like there? a six-part series, okay. that question, we'll right? Follow, we'll follow up. Thank <laughs> you, Will. Yeah. Paris. I mean, I have, I have had, I had a lot of fun doing the late-night food run and also going to the two places I just mentioned, Grace by Nia and La Fabrica, right? Um, and there's, there is fun to be had here. You do have to work a little hard to get to it. That's yeah. the thing about Boston. You have to seek it out. It doesn't always welcome and open mm -hmm. itself up to you. You have to seek it out. You have to have money for like Uber, mm -hmm. Lyft, and money for food or some of these events. They cost a lot of money. Like the yeah. tickets are, I don't know, $50, $100 sometimes. Yeah. It depends. Yeah.
Well, all right. I guess we're working on it. Uh, Steph and Paris, thank you so much. Thank you, Tori. Uh, thank let's you. go out soon. Yeah, let's go out.